it was very hard there's a lot that goes into this move i'm only 21 and to pick up my whole life that i've just built and my horse all my things to pick up and go and move you know 20,000 kilometers across the world that is a very big decision to be away from my family and i've already moved once in my life so i know how hard it is to to learn a new language to adapt um to to meet new people to make new friends so for me it was more deciding how i was going to do it Hi, my name is Mattia Harnicki, but everybody calls me Matt. I am an international model and I'm also a passionate horse rider. I also am an influencer on Instagram. So I got skydiving when I was quite young, when I was 16. And um, at that time, when I got approached, I wasn't really ready for the lifestyle. I wasn't definitely not confident in myself. Um, and I didn't believe that I could, I had what it takes to model. Fast forward to me having finished school, I uh, was at the Rider Series, which is a show jumping event here in Australia. And I got approached by um, a lady called Kathy Ward. Uh, and I was standing with a group of my friends and Kathy comes up towards us and she's like, he just had perfect features. He had this incredibly symmetrical face, big lips. Um, he has a face that you can't stop looking at. It, it stands out in the crowd. And you could just tell that he would photograph really well. He'd look amazing on the catwalk. So uh, I tracked him down and walked up to him and gave him my card. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, he called me and we brought him in for a meeting at the agency. At the time, I was very humbled by the, um, by the offer, but I didn't quite know what to make of it because I'd never modeled before, I didn't even know what that meant uh, or what kind of lifestyle that would be. So Kathy asked me to come into the agency and have a meeting and I went in, I met uh, Mimi, which is my manager now. You know, he just had something, it was really different and we could see it straight away on, on camera. Um, he had a really bad haircut <laughs> at the time, but we saw through that. After that I had my first job the week after for Dolly Magazine. Um, which was a shoot and it was also a video interview. So I was like straight away thrown in the deep end and I still remember like, the interview is still out now on YouTube and I look super awkward in it. And then fast forward six months, I did my first show season in Europe. I did the full circuit, which is uh, Paris, London and Milan. Um, I was, I had a very successful show run and my first show I did in Milan was in Poria Mani um, and I did Dolce Gabbana. I did several shows and I was actually the um, youngest boy of that season to be walking George Armani as well. He was on this amazing high and so was I because it was, you know, this young boy that had just six months ago was, you know, just a kid in a stable really. And I think also for a young Italian boy, it's like the pinnacle of, of fashion. Um, these houses that you're suddenly working with and you're meeting Giorgio Armani and you're meeting all these you're mixing with this really, you know, international fashion set and it, it was it was exciting for everyone. Chase is the horse I never wanted but needed. Um, I was always trying to find a horse that I could easily work together with and kind of go through the grades and compete and like a very easy straightforward horse and Chase is not easy or straightforward at all. Um, I really had to learn a different type of riding, a different type of like, um, a different type of management with him because it wasn't going to work any other way that I had with any other horse. Buying a horse it's like picking a flatmate. Not only do you have to like train with them, but you have to like live with them every day. And of course, you're not going to be compatible with every horse. Um, and luckily enough, I was very, very lucky to find Chase and he feels like a, like a brother almost. All right, let's go down. He's just in the, um, Paddock down the bottom. 
Chase, come. So much love. <laughs> I like to start off with um, having a bit of a play and just relaxing in the paddock. I don't want him to like always think that whenever he sees me, he's gonna work or we have to do something. Um, and I think it's good to just spend some time together not doing anything, just getting to know each other, just kind of hanging out, chilling. It's kind of like, I kind of think about it like with my friends. When I see my friends, we're not there working or um, doing something all the time. We just hang out and chill and get to know each other and play. Um, <laughs> here he comes. He's friendly. He's just got, um, he's got his walking ears on. <laughs> good boy, buddy. And he's a very big horse. He's um, 17 two hands high, which is 178 centimeters, 176 centimeters. Um, but he was uh, gelded when he was five, so he's kind of kept a lot of um, kept a lot of muscle. Um, but he's very sweet. He always wants to try and please or get a carrot. Other one. I've had Chase now for three years. Um, three years with this big guy and uh, he's taught me a lot and we've, I think we've both come a long way since we um, first um, first met. He acted quite young when I first met him because he was only six um, but he was very very sweet and for his height I kind of needed a horse that was safe so um, he took care of me kind of from the beginning and from then we just kept going um, but let's see if he wants to run around and play. Usually what we always do is we try and, um, well I try and get him a little bit excited, especially about because work's gonna come after this. Um, so I like him to think a little bit about how, like making him think it's fun to do the right thing, if that makes sense. And that I kind of try and do that through tricks or just through playing around in the paddock. Uh, because when I, when I train him with my coach or how I like to handle my horse is that I like him to always think, okay, how can I do the right thing? Because he wants to do the right thing. Good boy, that's better. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh. Last for you, for you. Yeah, just chill. Up, up. Good boy. Yeah, so this has been a decision in the making for a while now. So I've been asked to move to Europe years ago now. I've been modeling for three years and I've, I was asked a while ago by some of my agencies. They were like, you know, do you want to come here? It's going to be a lot easier for you to model to, for the clients. Um, we've had like good requests for you. Um, and it's something I always wanted to take up, but I was never in a position mentally to, to, to do it. But having traveled a lot in the last two years to Europe, and just getting a bit more of an idea of what the horse world is like there as well uh, really made me confident in um, in where I wanted to go. So I'm originally Italian German and I've lived in Europe already. I lived in Italy for 10 years. Um, and for me, the way I was trying to pick where I wanted to go is um, basically kind of around my horse and my work. So. Um, I've got agencies kind of spread out everywhere, but I knew I didn't want to go to Germany uh, because I, I, I like Germany, but I didn't I didn't feel like that was my place with my horse. I definitely didn't want to go back to Italy. Uh, London, I felt like was a bit too far out of everything again. Um, and uh, I've been traveling a little bit to the Netherlands for work because I've got um, an agency there called Republic and I really, really like Republic. So it kind of went hand in hand between having a very good agency there and then also really loving the country and the people. Um, and luckily a lot of people there speak English as well, which helps. Um, so after having seen, you know, I can be really happy here, my life can be easier, there's a lot more opportunities with my work, with uh, traveling, with modeling, with Longines, um, then I just decided, you know, why not try and make the move if I can. It was very hard, there's a lot that goes, there's, a lot that goes into this move. I'm only 21 and to pick up my whole life that I've just built, like this newly built life uh, and my horse, all my things to pick up and go and move, you know, 20,000 kilometers across the world. That is a very big decision to be away from my family. And I've already moved once in my life. So I know how hard it is to, to learn a new language, to adapt, um, to, to meet new people, to make new friends. Um, but it kind of came to a point where I saw the benefit, the benefit kind of, outdid the negatives. 
for my family I've been traveling for three years now so they've kind of seen me come and go of course this is going to be very different so um, I know my mom and my dad are, are upset that I'm leaving and I think it's it's the it's the first kind of bird leaving the nest kind of thing I was very happy for him but uh, um, because I know there are a lot of opportunity and there will be a lot of opportunity for him but for me it's a it's very painful because if it was if it was here he moved out of uh, from the house it's okay but to go in the other side of the world it's very very painful I'm very happy for him I know he has more opportunities overseas and it's very important for him to grow as a person as well I did the same so I can't blame him but Obviously, we will miss him, and it's a new chapter as a father as well, and uh, it's very painful. It's hard for everyone, and it's very bittersweet. I, I like my life here. I, I have very, very good friends. My family's here. I'm very close with my brother. Um, so I'm not leaving Australia bitter. I love this country, um, and I never thought I would be leaving. Uh, but I'm also very, very excited for this new journey and this new part of my life uh, in Europe. It sounds like a massive deal, but I've, I know my brother very well and I know the way he thinks and it just didn't surprise me at all. I was like, okay, that makes sense. And I think also a lot of people probably don't understand the connection. Like people are probably like, oh, you can just buy another one or you can, you know, it's cheaper to do this and that. But really, unless, I think unless you have a horse uh, and like an animal that you really connect with like that, like the way he connects with them, you'll never understand why you make a decision like this to, you know, drag him halfway around the world, or the other side of the world, really. Um, you yeah, know, I think, but I think he made the right decision. Um, he's a special horse too, Chase, is not like your average. No, he's got something special about him, I don't know. So where Chase is now, he's in Glenory at Emma Wynett's property, uh, and Emma Wynett is a very lovely girl. She uh, rides with Stefan Peters in the States, um, so she's not actually uh, using the stables, uh, which means that Denise Rogan is my current coach. She actually rents the stables from her, uh, and she manages it, and she trains all the horses inside, and uh, they're an amazing group of people. They've really helped me with um, a lot of things uh, from my training to my schedule. My horse also had a very serious surgery to his hoof. Um, we had to remove a tumor, which meant like two months of box rest and five months recovery. And it was changing the plates every day and making sure the foot never touched the ground um, when it was being cleaned. And they were very, very thorough. And um, if it wasn't for them, Chase wouldn't be here today because he had um, he had an episode one night where he got an infection, a viral infection going through him um, and we nearly lost him. So if it wasn't for their management and them actually picking up on it, because I was overseas, um, and then bringing him to the vet, he would, have, he would probably not be here today. Emma is our groom at the stables and she's kind of been taking care of Chase while I've been away most of the time as well. Um, as well as my friend Meg. Meg's like Chase's second mum. Emma's been around since the beginning uh, and she was vital whilst um, Chase was recovering from the surgery, cleaning his hoof every day, um, making sure he was well and she was the one that also spotted that something was up that time when he had that infection running through him. So yeah, no, I, I definitely owe a lot to him. Um, it, it's very much a partnership type thing with these horses. It's, it's a very long journey. It's, there's no quick fix. Um, you, Matt's been very lucky and has brought Chase as a younger horse and has been bringing him up through the grades himself. And you really create a big bond with these horses. Um, it's, they're not easy to replace. It's, you can't just go out and buy another one. And, and he's his dance partner. Uh, he's, it's just an incredible relationship between the two and they're going to make that bond even stronger and they've got so much more to come and experience and, and it's, it's a good journey for them both to go down. And I go way back. I actually met Meg when I was working, I was stable handing when I was 16 at a riding school and she was stable handing there as well. We became best friends straight away and we, we did everything together and she, was, um, she had her horse very close to me. 
as well. So we were kind of always in each other's lives and she's, um, she, she knows me the best out of any of my friends. And so she, with that relationship, she's taken her, my horse kind of as one of her own. So if I'm gone, she'll take him out for like, um, she'll hand walk him to graze or she'll, she'll, she calls it like the Meg salon. So she'll, she'll take him in and like give him a massive groom and just look after him and just make sure he's like mentally happy. As much as it's, it's important to exercise a horse's body, I think Chase is the type of horse that needs his mind exercised all the time. He just needs to be stimulated a little bit um, doing things. Uh, and Meg makes sure, just does her best to make sure he's happy while I'm gone. When Matt told me he was moving, I was shocked, I was devastated, um, but also super excited for him. This is something he's wanted for a very long time, and as much as I'll miss him, um, he's my best friend, he's the person I turn to for everything. Um, sometimes he knows me, most times he knows me better than I know myself, so I was yeah, definitely devastated, but also super proud. He is chasing one of the biggest dreams of his whole life and I could not be prouder. He really inspires me every day and I tell him this all the time. Um, just to go for what you really believe in and it's just been amazing watching him work so hard to make all of this a reality now and I'm super, super excited for him. Starting to plan the actual move was difficult for me because I, I was thinking you know, I, there was there's a few thoughts going through my mind. I was like, okay, first thing is, I've got this horse. What can I do? Do I sell him? And the first uh, answer to that was no. I'm not going to sell my horse. And then I was like, okay, second answer is I've got to I've got to take him with me. And then I was like, okay, so how do you actually take a horse from Australia to the Netherlands? Um, turns out it's a little bit more complicated than I thought. There's there's quite a process. So I started looking up what the major companies were that did this transport and then I came across uh, Equine International Air Freight and they were the partners for WEG, they were very highly recommended and I actually had one person that had already flown with them that I knew and she said, you know, they're the best, they will treat your horse um, uh, like one of their own and they'll, they'll get him there very safe, very comfortably, uh, they will make sure Chase is their priority. So we are just uh, on the way to the office now of Equine International Air Freight and they have called me and they told me that they actually have a date and a flight planned for Chase and I and I've been waiting for this day for a year and a half now so I'm super curious when it's going to be and hopefully it's sometime soon so let's go in and uh, we'll see what they say Hi Sonia, how are you? Hey Matt, how are you going? I'm very good, how are you? Good to see you Oh, you too We've got some exciting news. I think yeah. we've got a flight date for you. Yeah, I know. I heard. No, I'm very excited to hear. That's good. Do you want to come through and yeah, we'll talk? Yeah, definitely. Let's go through. Let's hope it's sometime in May. Let's hope. Okay. Oh, hi, hi Sean. Matt. Nice to meet you. I'm sure. Yeah, nice good. to meet you too. I heard you have some exciting news for me. Yes, we do. Um, we received confirmation wow. today that we have a flight on the 13th of May for Chase. 13th of May? Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay, so, sooner than I thought. Yeah. And I'm glad to hear that because I've been kind of dying to get over there. So. Yeah. I guess first things first, do you have a passport for Chase? Or is I do. I got one made because I knew I would have to. Yep. Um, so I've already had the vet come out and do everything they needed. So it's completed. It went back to Ye, back to me. Fantastic. Um, so you can hold on to that if you need for the booking. Great. Thank That's you. That's good. good. So we'll take a copy of this and this has to travel with him just like your okay. passport has to travel with you. Okay. And I guess next thing is to discuss um, the quarantine, whether you would like to use one of our properties or whether you'd like to yes. set up property for yourself. Yeah, um, I think um, at first I was really thinking, okay, it might be easier to just go to a property that's already set up, but I know this uh, this whole process is going to be quite strenuous on him to begin with, so I think keeping him at home where he is now will be the easiest yeah. for him. So I kind of wanted to know what I can do to manage that at home. Um, obviously the biggest concern is biosecurity, so we don't yeah. want any diseases getting into place while he's in quarantine. He'll have to do 30 days and the Department of Agriculture will have to approve it. We yeah. have an oper operations and governance manual that we issue to everybody. Yeah. Um, this has all the instructions, requirements for quarantine. You'll need to take a, a good read through that and see how your property 
meets those requirements. Okay. So it perfect. won't get approved unless these requirements yeah. are met. So basically, prior to flight, it's going to be blood and general vet check, yep. and that's maybe like two weeks into the quarantine. Yep. Uh, and then uh, two days prior, final vet check, making sure everything's okay. Yep. And maybe a week before, start to introduce electrolytes yep. to make sure he's comfortable during the flight. What is my biggest concern with the flight? The biggest concern is travel sickness. So that's caused when a horse doesn't isn't able to get its head down and release all the mucus. Um, but we sort of cover that in that during the flights when it's quiet periods or we have long time, we, we remove the front doors and we feed the horses off the ground. So it gives them a chance to get their head down and yeah. breathe and, and release any. Okay, perfect. And going back to the flight now, what is my actual flight path? Do you know? Yeah, so we're departing from Sydney, Sydney. Um, with Emirates. Your first stop will be Hong Kong. Spend an hour or two in Hong Kong. Um, you stay on the same plane and the air conditioning is all pretty good. And the next stop then is um, Dubai. And a couple of hours there where you'll change planes. And then next stop is Luxembourg. Okay, Yeah. Perfect. So when you arrive in Luxembourg, you'll spend a couple of hours with Chase. He'll go into a stable. I think it's called an animal hotel. Yeah. He can have a rest and a drink and yeah. all of that. And that's where he'll get checked by the vet. Okay, perfect. Because I think one of the main things also I'm scared a bit about is colic because my horse is quite a sensitive stomach. Yeah. So that's something I'll... We'll have to try and monitor yeah. as we go. You know, you never really know what you're going to be up against. Um, the good thing is that you know Chase and you yeah. will notice any little changes with him. So you'll be right on top of it if, if there is anything. The, the most important thing is you say we're doing quarantine where he's living now. So he's all calm. His, we'll just keep it very stress-free for him. Now, last time I came as well, I did ask a bit of a special request. Um, and it was mm -hmm. a lot to ask for. Um, but I asked if I could actually be on the flight with my horse for the whole journey and is that something that we were able to work out or? Well Cameron and I did manage to um, get you a seat oh, on really? the plane so that's um, really exciting oh, and, amazing. and it is unusual because um, yeah. usually owners don't travel with their horses so, yeah absolutely um, so I'm sure Chase is going to appreciate you being there yeah and, no really and um, you'll get to experience everything um, firsthand and sit up in the um, crew quarters or the groom quarters and yeah and how's that set up is it actually like is it like a normal plane or is it set up a little bit differently like the seating area is it you don't get first class <sighs> <treatment. air> hostess. <laughs> there's no one coming around with a little trolley no <laughs> but there, there is some leg room in there so okay the, perfect the, what yeah. would be great is if like maybe a few days before quarantine we set it up a little bit early if, yep. if one of you guys can come out and we can try and arrange that just to make sure I'm actually setting it up right yep. so when the inspection comes it can just be tick and check and it's all yep. done. Yeah we can come out and it'd be good to see Chase as well and just yeah. kind of meet him as well yeah. see what you're dealing with. <laughs> Shake his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay so. perfect. We'll, we'll make it as easy as, as possible and yep. stress-free for you and Chase. Well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I felt like it was very good. I got all the information I needed. Now it's more like, I think now it's more a matter of like actually getting stuff done. You know, getting um, Chase like approved by the vet, getting the quarantine done. And then once that's all set up, you just have to fly. So we will be okay. There's just lots to do still, but we have such a great team with them. And they are, they've done this so many times now that we, we're in great hands. I just got a phone call saying that I need to go to Milan for a job for two days. And I've been planning this whole move for literally a year and a half. Um, but th that's the thing, you know, sometimes a job comes up and you just can't say no. And you just have to make things work. And things are last minute, things are stressful. Um, it's hard to replan, but you just have to go with it. Um, so I will be traveling to Milan for two days right before Chase leaves and then I'll fly back the same day Chase leaves. I'll land in the morning at 6 a.m. My horse has to leave at 8 a.m. from the stable so I'll quickly get a car from the airport to the stable, pick up my horse and then together we will head off to Europe. And that's very, that's cutting it so close and you know what? If my client was to book me the wrong flight for Milan, I just wouldn't, I would miss my flight with Chase. I just wouldn't be able to go with him. It is very stressful um, but we'll make it work. We will definitely make it work.